Hello, Earthlings. Welcome to the Aliens Detectives Club, where the mysteries of the universe are no longer just stories, but topics seriously discussed, even in places like the United States Congress. Lately, our world has been buzzing with questions. Are aliens real? Have they visited us? What do they want? Adults debate in big buildings. We young detectives are on a mission of our own. Your hosts today are myself, Matt, and my friend, Lynn. We are assisted by a powerful artificial intelligence called Chat GPT, who wrote this script with a little help. Together, we'll dig deep exploring the latest findings and connecting the dots between playtime and real-time investigations. With every episode, we'll navigate the serious, the strange, and the splendidly extraterrestrial, and maybe something called ultra-terrestrial, and maybe something called interdimensional. Just because you are kids, doesn't mean we can't uncover the truth that even the grown-ups are seeking. In fact, there's a decent chance you might be better at it than the grown-ups. So young investigators, are you ready to join our quest? Because in the Alien Detectives Club, the universe's biggest questions await. And who knows? Together, we might just find some interesting answers. All right. I'm liking that intro more and more each time I listen to it. Hello out there. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing, Lynn? I'm doing great today, Matt. How are you? I am doing great. I'm excited to record another quick hit episode of the Aliens Detectives Club with you. I really liked our first one. Yeah, so did I. I really enjoyed it, and I'm excited to be back here again to dive further into what's new with aliens. Yeah. There's a lot of news out there lately, so it's yeah. great to be able to add it into small bite-sized pieces for our our young detectives. Yes, absolutely. Um, so should we should we talk about that? Are we? Are, do you want to check in on uh, the latest? Yeah, on- you know what? I was actually really fascinated by the recent news from Mexico, where a guy named Jamie Mousen presented alien remains to the Congress. Um, you know, sources are still out on whether they are real or not, but I'm actually eager to get an answer soon. And it got me thinking one question in particular, which I'm hoping you might be able to answer. Um, you know, if aliens are real, what do you think they look like? Yes. Well, our one of our questions of the week. Um, well, I you know every once in a while I go to the great AIs. Uh, that we have online and I ask them uh, there's chat GPT and there's other artificial intelligence uh, (laughs) entities online that you can go and ask these questions just like you can on Google and and other search engines but uh, I did it just this morning before the show I asked chat GPT and and I actually I'm going to see if I can actually let chat GPT answer does that sound cool to you yeah that sounds great Okay. All right. So I get, let me, I have to do something. I'm going to share, I'm going to let it talk to us. I am, here we go. This should work. So, ta-da. yeah. So I basically, I asked chat GPT, if, if aliens are real, what, what kinds are real? And this is what it, this is what it said. Um, I'm going to do that much smoother. Ufology is the study of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and often delves into stories of extraterrestrial encounters and abductions. While many claims in ufology lack scientific verification, there are a few species or types of aliens that have repeatedly cropped up in stories and reports over the years. Some of the most commonly mentioned in UFO lore include greys or greys. Appearance, they are typically described as being small, around three to four feet tall, with gray skin, large black almond-shaped eyes, small or no nose, and a small mouth. Their bodies are often described as thin or frail, with long arms. Reptilians. 
Appearance, these are humanoid beings with reptile-like features. They are typically described as being tall, with green or brown scaly skin, yellow or red eyes, and a strong build. Nordics. Appearance, they are humanoid and resemble Northern Europeans, with tall statures, long blonde hair, blue eyes, and fair skin. Pleiadians slash Plagerans. Appearance, they are similar in appearance to Nordics, but are specifically said to originate from the Pleiades star cluster. Mantis beings, or mantids. Appearance, resembling Earth's praying mantises, these beings are said to be tall, with a thin and elongated body, triangular head, and large, bulbous eyes. Tall whites. Appearance, they are taller than the average human, with a very slender build and pale white skin. They may have larger eyes than humans, but are generally humanoid in appearance. While these descriptions are prevalent in UFO stories and discussions, it's essential to distinguish between anecdotal accounts and scientifically verified evidence. As of my last training data in January 2022, there is no confirmed evidence of extraterrestrial beings visiting Earth or any confirmed interactions between aliens and humans or governments. All right. Did that, uh, did that work? Were you able to hear that all right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, so... That that basically uh, what ChatGPT that sort of syncs with what I've uh, gotten from talking to people. It's we got those Greys, the Reptilians, the Nordics, and then maybe these um, mantis, like praying mantis giant beings, and then there's these the tall whites. Those are those are basically the most common types of aliens that are talked about in all these UFO stories. So maybe those are the ones that actually exist. Wow. There's a lot of different options. I mean, I, from my very limited scope, I've only ever thought about the gray aliens, um, the ones that show up in, in general movies. Um, that's, that's kind of the view I have, but I know there's been a lot more evidence um, and just stories coming out from, you know, abductions and other situations and experiences that people here on earth have had. Uh, so it'll be interesting to continue to uncover that and see if some of these alien remains are actually real. Yeah, I mean, it it kind of takes us back to the um, aliens that were presented in uh, Mexico. Um, what did you think those look like? The ones in, in Mexico? Yeah. They I mean, looked those... quite similar to gray aliens to me, although I guess a lot smaller than I thought they would be. I don't know. Yeah why but for some reason i have this idea that they're a little bit taller uh they're yeah, the ones and, that were presented in in the congress were quite quite small and yeah petite. they were yeah they were really tiny um yeah and those are interesting they there's some people are publishing articles saying that they are obvious fakes and then it seems like the scientist uh, or researcher who presented them is saying he is taking them to doctors and they're doing x-rays and they're proving these are not manufactured um but there's seems to be a lot of swirling debate and controversy about them um, yeah but they do though they do look like tiny little gray aliens like i would say they're a lot smaller than you hear about the stories of the gray aliens being three to four feet tall um yeah, yeah absolutely it's interesting I mean yeah, go ahead. Well, I was, one thing I also noticed is, like you said, most people only know about the gray aliens. But if you ask ChatGPT, you know, what percent of stories um, have, you know, which stories have the most different types of aliens, the apparently the reptilian aliens actually are reported a lot, like as almost as much as the grays, but we don't get a lot of sci-fi movies with reptilian aliens. I mean, Right. I mean, I guess we have some there are it's not like there there are reptilian characters in some movies, but. Yeah, but yeah. they're not considered aliens. Yeah, like The Last Starfighter was a great movie that had their aliens were kind of reptilian looking. OK, Galaxy that would be a good Quest, reference. Galaxy Quest had a, some reptilian aliens that were kind of. Yeah, but it's not as often. It's not, it's not really we don't do a lot of that, I think, in our movies. Yeah. Well, wow. right. excited well, so to see it becoming. Well, you know, I actually am curious with talking about all these different types of aliens. Are you going to be dressing up as an alien for Halloween this year? I'm sure I will at some point. I have <laughs> yeah. uh, a collection of alien masks and sci-fi things. And I, and I, for my birthday this year, I got 
something I've wanted for so long, which is a slee stack mask. Um, and it's a pretty good one. Okay. Okay. Uh, and sorry, I actually have no idea what a slee stack is. Can you tell me a little more? <laughs> Any for our viewers who may not know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, slee stack is a lizard man creature that came into uh, my knowledge from a show called Land of the Lost, and uh, where a, a family, uh, a dad, son, and daughter go down a waterfall into the some other dimension where dinosaurs are still alive and the slee stack are underground. Um, it's called The Land of the Lost, one of the greatest shows ever. It used to be a Saturday morning sort of show in the 80s, I guess. And uh, yeah, and so these slee stack, you know, in, as I've gotten into... Um, uh, learning about aliens and and learning that apparently reptilian aliens are a thing uh, that people talk about. I realized I've no, didn't really see many reptilian aliens in uh, any television or sci-fi, and so I had to. I just like was thinking to myself, where have I ever seen one? And then I remembered Land of the Lost and the Slee Stack as a child, okay. one of the only representations. So, uh, well, I think that's a good reference for anyone out there who doesn't know what a ret reptilian alien looks like they can yeah. go check out land of the lost yep yeah and there's a remake of it a will ferrell did a, a new land of the lost movie and they made oh, the amazing stack, yeah they made the sleeve stack look much more scary in that one but in the original show land of the lost even though the sleeve stack were always like wandering around in the caves and scaring the humans they not once did the sleeve stack ever hurt or, uh, a human in that show it was never happened so it was just sort of like and there was one good slee stack named neelix that they were buddies with who was kind of like a i don't know he was kind of like a magic user uh he, he had his own clothing he had like special gold clothing the other slee stack i think were mainly pretty much without clothes they were just giant lizards oh wow okay very interesting yeah <laughs> Well, Anyways. yeah, I guess it's just, it's crazy that we're already in October and it's spooky season, which also means uh, we're just over a year away from the USA presidential elections, um, yes. which is next November in 2024. And I guess with all this talk of aliens recently, I'm curious, Matt, if you can tell us what our presidential candidates might be saying about aliens right now. Absolutely. Um, well, it has come up. Uh, at least two presidential candidates have said something specifically about UFOs and alien disclosure. Uh, Chris Christie said in the first Republican presidential debate, he was asked about UFOs and aliens, and his response was basically, come on, man, I get the UFO question. <laughs> so that's that's basically his position. It's a big okay. joke. Interesting. Um, yeah, but then there's a there's another candidate named uh, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. He's a okay. Republican candidate doing pretty well in the polls, and he says he's in favor of full UFO disclosure, and basically says if there's anything being hidden there by the government, it needs to be disclosed. So that's his position. And then, um, but uh, other people, uh, like Donald Trump, is probably he's he's a candidate, but. He has said that he would disclose if aliens were real, but he didn't do it while he was president. So it sort of we're not really sure where he stands on it. He hasn't really said anything about it lately. And the same thing with uh, President Biden or President Biden. He's running. We're not really sure where he stands on it. It's kind of unclear. So. OK, so why do you think it's important that they are talking about it or where their stance is on aliens? coming up in this election well at a minimum the the jet pilots who testified before congress and said they are seeing flying tic tacs and weird flying objects in their airspace and they say it's one it's dangerous because they could collide with these things they can't have unknown things flying around in our military airspace they said so it's it's one it's just dangerous and two if these things are hostile, we can't fight them. They're way beyond our technology. So that's a national security question. 
So if our jet pilots are telling the president and everyone uh, we have a problem, then we need to listen to our jet pilots at a at a minimum. And then you know David Grush says that the the uh, intelligence officer who testified he says that there's people there's a part of the U.S. government hiding alien crafts and possibly treaties with aliens. Like if that's true, we all need to know this right now. This is all this is a big deal. Absolutely. I mean. So. It'll be interesting to see what is being hidden from us because, you know, we need to have all the information to make our own decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And the I guess the latest news on this whole uh, thing of alien disclosure in the U.S. is that apparently 30 more people have come forward as whistleblowers to say that there really is something going on that the U.S. government is hiding a an alien craft program. So wow. there's apparently 30 plus people. There's it, the evidence for it. It seems overwhelming. So it really is a very interesting time to watch U.S. politics and see what is really going on. They just had another weird thing that happened. They removed the Speaker of the House, McCarthy. Uh, that was a historic. I don't know that it has anything to do with aliens, but it's it's like there's lots of fights going on, it seems, in the U.S. political world right now. So what is this whole thing? I, this is an additional question um, since we're on the topic of uh, private bases that focus on aliens. What is the deal with Area 51? Is that real or is that not real? There seems to be a ton of evidence that Area 51 and a, a spot next to near Area 51 called S4 I mean, those places are legendary for having possible, uh, being possible places where the U.S. is hiding alien technology. And there's a, there's several very interesting stories I've heard. Um, well, I guess there's two major ones. There's two major stories I've heard. One is from a guy named Bob Lazar, years ago, said that Area S4 was literally hiding alien craft that the government had him working on until he was fired. Which is a, it's a big story. He's a he's sort of a legend in the UFO world. Um, so he has that story. And then there's a guy named Bill Cooper who, in the '80s, said that area, um, either Area 51 or Area S4, was a secret alien human base. Wow. Literally, said an underground human alien base. I mean, it's an old legend, but again, like the Mexico U alien story, there have been plenty of people saying the stories are ridiculous, but. The world seems to be a strange place. So we're reevaluating all these old legends. Wow. wow. Oh, there's there's also, of course, the legend of Antarctica. There's a lot of theories that there might be an alien base in Antarctica. That's That's been floated around a lot. Or an ancient uh, civilization from 30,000 years ago before apparently human civilization. There's. Well, what do you think about having that as one of our topics for our next episode? Yeah. Yeah. Which, uh, how would we phrase that, you think, for next week? Um, where are other possible alien base? Not, I guess that would be more like alien alien, but uh, how would we say that hidden sites focusing on aliens i don't know i don't know what what do you normally call it matt yeah i mean i guess something like uh where are there secret alien bases like just you know anywhere and we can just because that the answer is actually not just on earth there's also the moon and other planets so it's or, i mean it's basically the question is where are they where if they're here where are they and because it's cities bases and um yeah it's something like that i think we got the gist of it for that question okay. um okay. So what would, oh, what, let me see. What would be, um, oh, I, I, I want to add one thing to the political, yes. the presidential answer, because President Obama went on Jimmy Kimmel Live and he gave an interesting, he said UFOs were real. So that's a former president. And, uh, and there's stories of, uh, oh, and also got to mention Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio has said some very, um, you know, he takes this issue of whether there's something being hidden very seriously. And he was a presidential candidate last time around. So he might be again. So he also gets on the list. 
Okay. Okay. But let's see, if next week we're going to talk about where are the aliens and where are the bases, is that, do we need a second question for next week? Yeah, let's get another one picked. And then we can re-say this, so we can add it in. Yeah. Um, let's see. What do you think? Uh, If we had an audience right now, what would a what would a child possibly ask now? This whole one, you know, a fun question. Total, it's kind of different, but it came up a bunch when I went to the to talk to those kids at the summer camp and just let them ask questions. They kids want to know if our sun or galaxy will collide with another sun or galaxy, okay. <laughs> and and if so, what would happen? So I don't know. And they want to know where black holes come from. I don't. They're like, what is a black hole, and how do you make one? <laughs> Okay. Um, do you feel comfortable or want to talk about either of those? Um, I mean, I, you know, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really sure where I would go with those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's something where we would need to have someone who's maybe a little more experienced. Hmm. Well, maybe we just, we, uh, maybe we leave it open for the moment. What our other question, I mean, where are we've at we talked about if there's aliens what do they look like oh well i mean one that sort of fits really well with the what do aliens look like is are any of these aliens mean or nice and are they good I, or bad yeah because i don't know if you were following along on the screen but the response from chat gpt actually gave us gave you a little bit more detail on each alien about whether they're considered good or friendly in general and i skipped those because i was like I'm just going to keep this answer on description, but next week we could go to, you know, what's the his, you know, if there is a history and maybe we even could go one alien group at a time, but um, no, let's, let's just do that. Like are aliens uh, friendly? Okay. Just that. I mean, that's a good question. I think where are yeah. they and are they friendly? Okay. And so I let's can, yeah. close up the last question and then we can, like talk back and forth and ask, you know, all right. So what our next question is going to be for next, next episode. You want to do that? Like we did last yeah. time. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. So what questions should we, um, okay. So we wrapped up with, why do you think it's important that we're talking that the presidents are talking about it? And then you said your answer. Uh, and I said, let's see, I can just kind of go on saying, well, Matt, I really enjoyed our session today. I feel like I learned a lot. I think we're close to wrapping up today, unless yeah. there's anything else you want to share. No, that was great. That was fun. Okay, cool. Yeah, of course. So let's go ahead and share our two questions for next episode. Matt, do you want to want to give everyone the details? I believe, well, one of the questions we're going to go with is, if aliens are here, where are they? Where, you know, do they have cities or bases? And let's talk about it. So. And then I think the second question that we've decided on are questions that actually came from kids that you've spoken with, which is, are aliens friendly? Yeah, a really basic, just like we talked about today, what, what aliens look like if they're real. We can talk about each of those types of aliens and are they... Uh, in, are we hearing stories that they're friendly or not? And you can just sort of skim over some of that. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Matt. Well, if there isn't anything else, I think I'm ready to wrap up today. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you all for joining us today for another episode of the Alien Detectives Club. And uh, we look forward to catching up with all of you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. If you want to explore these topics more deeply or explore more from the UFOlogy for Kids series by Matt Reddy, please visit mattready.net or hive1.net. Farewell for now.